This is my final video about the upgrades to my uh, Open Builds Mini Mill. In my Open Builds Mini Mill review, I showed some of the upgrades I had done, uh, but I think at this point I can no longer call it an Open Builds Mini Mill. Here's a picture of what the Mini Mill looked like when I put it together originally. I had added some weight covers to prevent chips and, and debris from getting into the lead screw. And then here it is after making a bunch of other upgrades. I had added linear rails to all three axes. I had reinforced the column. I had built a new gantry plate that's a little bigger. And I had uh, added a two and a half inch aluminum base that the mini mill was bolted to. And then this shows what I'm doing now, which is taking that same aluminum base, but then adding another two and a half inch piece of aluminum uh, that will function as the column. There are bolts that will go through the base and into the column. To get those bolts to actually uh, fit in there, I need to I need to countersink them. And so, I, although I was able to drill through the base you know, on my drill press, I couldn't uh, countersink it for the bolts. So I realized I needed to uh, use the mini mill itself to cut the countersinks. So this video shows what I did. Like I said, I had pre-drilled the holes on uh, the drill press, and then I um, and then I'm running a program here to use those pre-drill locations to uh, enter, and then it uh, adaptives out the rest of the countersink. The work holding here is pretty janky. I just have some zip ties and clamps, uh, but it worked fine. I think part of the reason it worked fine is because the piece of uh, aluminum is so heavy; it's like 30 pounds that it just wasn't going to go anywhere. what it looks like you can see the countersinks and here's the the base uh, on the other side so flipped over you can see the the six holes that'll go into the column and then you can also see just barely some of the other holes uh, that have been drilled and tapped to fit the linear rails that are now go now going to attach directly to the base and uh, also the bearing blocks here and here it is with the column attached uh, one thing I wanted to mention quickly is that the Open Builds Mini Mills kit comes with these 8mm lead screws that are actually decently undersized. I don't know why they're this undersized, but at least the anti-backlash nuts that they sell are also undersized the same amount. I was wondering if maybe it wasn't a proper 8mm lead screw, maybe it's like a 5 16 Imperial lead screw, but that doesn't make sense either because 5 16 is, 5 16 is also bigger than this. Uh, and it causes problems with the 8mm bearings uh, on the mini mill because the lead screw can, can kind of move a little bit inside those bearings and that causes some vibration and resonance. And I've always wondered why it was like that. I thought maybe it was just the, the bearing itself had some play in it um, because they're those tiny cheap bearings, but I realize now it's actually a problem with the lead screw. So I had to buy some, some new ones anyway because I, I wanted to modify them. And uh, you can see here that the the size is much closer to eight millimeters. In fact, it's just very slightly under eight millimeters, which is great because it means it very tightly fits into the eight millimeter uh, inner diameter of the bearings. Then, so this shows how I am constraining the lead screw. Uh, I have um, different bearings. It's hard to tell the scale from this picture, but that's the eight millimeter lead screw and a uh, and a dual angular contact bearing, so it is able to take much greater thrust loads. It's kind of shimmed to fit inside this bearing block that I made, and my father-in-law has a nice large lathe that he used to turn down the lead screw on one end. They have uh, an M6 thread followed by a 5mm smooth shaft. So the bearing itself is constrained on one end by the other part of the bearing block, and on the end that you see here, there's a plate that goes over and mounts to those four holes that holds the bearing and prevents it from moving this way. And then the uh, other side on the lead screw, there's a lock collar. And on this side, there's uh, an M6 nut that uh, tightens on that M6 thread, so you can actually add some preload. And here's what it looks like uh, with, with the plate on the front that constrains the bearing. And here it is all together. Um, you see on the other side, I just have a, a 3D printed bearing block that's much smaller. The reason is because on that side, I didn't bother to fix the end, so the lead screw is actually able to float inside that bearing. I'm just kind of putting all my eggs in one basket, I guess, with this really beefy bearing block on one end. I actually do plan to eventually replace the other bearing block, but for now, this, this simple 3D printed part works fine. 
And here's the linear rails mounted to the base. This is with the, the y-axis gantry plate all mounted and connected. And here's a close-up on the, the coupler. Um, I found these couplers online and they, uh, they work pretty well. Um, I had to modify the, the diameters of them so that it would fit both my 5mm smooth end of the lead screw and the quarter-inch uh, Mimi 23 shaft. As they came, they also didn't have any set screws, so I drilled into them to add set screws. It's kind of interesting because this material, it kind of looks like aluminum, but it's heavier than aluminum, but it's uh, really easy to cut, so I think it's probably a zinc. And then here it is now with both the x-axis mounted. You see I just used the x-axis from the upgraded mini mill, and the z-axis, same deal, but it's now bolted to that column. I had to make some new uh, weight covers that were wider to cover the wider base on, the, on that y-axis. And while I was at it, I built a new enclosure. Previously, I had this really janky uh, wooden enclosure that I made out of two by twos. So I actually got some extra aluminum extrusions and uh, made something that was a little more square and looks a little better. While I was at it, I also got a NEMA enclosure. Uh, it's a proper metal enclosure that I mounted all the electronics into. They're actually mounted in there so they can't move around. Uh, before, I was just using a, a simple plywood box. And then so here I changed out on the z-axis from the double open build style router mounts to this um, large cast aluminum mount. And the reason is because with those open builds mounts, if you crank them down a lot, they tend to put, I think, some asymmetric pressure uh, on the bearing inside the spindle. The Makita router, it's got a pretty good uh, housing for a hand router, but for a spindle, it's not very beefy, and so you, you can actually pinch those bearings. So to avoid that, I'm using this much larger surface area of contact here on this style of mount, which I think is um, it makes the bearing sound a lot better, at least. I also took the opportunity to tram the mill, so that means getting the axis of the basically the z-axis perpendicular to the xy plane and this is before uh, after doing some facing you can see both some circular looking lines as well as these horizontal lines and if you were to run your finger over it those horizontal lines actually feel like ridges and this is after tramming you can see it's actually much smoother there's still a, an interesting visual pattern here but that's actually not reflective of any um, texture like if you run your finger over this it feels mirror polished smooth you can kind of tell that from the lighting, but it's, it's really hard to show on camera, but I wanted to mention this. So I ran a test to do my kind of normal facing, and here I'm actually running that same cut that I normally do for facing, but I'm running it at twice the feed rate. And you can see that the mill uh, definitely has no problem. So I wanted to keep pushing it, and uh, I went back to my, the, my normal feed rate and chip load, but I wanted to keep pushing the depth of cut until I noticed something start to give. Uh, and I actually got up to here with 0.1 inches of depth of cut, with that same eighth inch uh, width of cut. And this is where I started noticing some new sounds, and uh, you'll hear them in a sec, but for whatever reason only happen in the conventional milling direction. The climb milling direction still sounds good, so I could have continued to push this, but this is more than I was hoping for anyway. I was kind of just hoping to double my material removal rate, and this is more than more than double, so I, I didn't feel like I needed to push it too much further. last thing I did was I increased the size of my x-axis because I had that um, length of c-beam from the y-axis of the open builds minimo and so I was like oh I could just put that on here and that's what I did. I also uh, made a larger x 
uh, gantry plate. So this is about six inches by 10 inches now for the overall size. And I can get just about that in terms of the work area. So much better work area. And I think it's, I think it's enough now. I think I'm, I'm happy. So if you see any videos from now on, they're going to be with this new mill probably. And I don't think I can really call it an open builds mini mill anymore. It's just going to be my weird Frankenstein CNC mill.